joining us for worship this morning. It is a Sunday to pray. We're going to spend some time in prayer today. We have prayer shawls spread out on the altar today. If you see a prayer shawl that you would like and you want to take it to somebody, uh, come and grab some. We've got uh, at least eight, nine, ten down here. And uh, so come and grab one if you need one to take one to somebody. Um, we'll be uh, making special mention of lots of different things this morning and taking some moments to pray uh, throughout our service uh, this morning. Uh, let's get to our feet as we start off with the first verse of this great hymn that's going to carry us through our service today. Sweet hour of prayer. Thank you. 
seated, and I'm going to take a moment to pray uh, here. If you have uh, any requests uh, this morning, uh, we're going to focus on people who are sick at this moment, especially those with cancer. Uh, in this time, we want to pray for those uh, that need a word of prayer. And uh, I want to remember Annabelle in prayer as she uh, tested positive for COVID this past week. And she brought, um, uh, took Bobby back home last Sunday, got back home, wasn't feeling good, had a cough and things, and then got tested. So she hasn't been in school for the last, for the past week. So, but uh, Paul, um, Paul also dealing with his eyes, recovering from the surgery uh, there and all. So uh, remember the Kermit's family in prayer. They've been going through quite a bit uh, here this past week. Is there anybody you'd like to make mention of this morning? Anybody? Loretta, go first there, then Amy. My sister Nancy and I went out and she section below our video here on Facebook, please do that. Uh, Tammy and Susan are always in the comment section uh, seeing who's out there. If you have Tammy and Susan directly there, align to them directly, you can send them requests there and they'll, they'll get them into the service here. So, And uh, we'll make your request known today. Anybody else today? Anybody you'd like to remember in prayer? Just remember the Piper family. Marley's been requesting prayer for Yes. Yes. Uh, got, got the call yesterday. Uh, Dana does have cancer in the liver. And uh, he's free. he said you can share that. You can, he is not ready to talk about it yet and to get it out there. But he says you can pray for him and lift him up. The kids are all around him right now. And Marlene has been helping there. So, so I remember the Piper family in prayer. It's a difficult time there for them. Let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time, lifting up those who are sick. Remember, if you need a prayer shawl for someone, feel free to take that today. Uh, my mom does say thank you also uh, for her prayer shawl. We sent her one um, not long ago. My mom had uh, surgery a few weeks ago to remove a mass um, in her breast and all. So uh, she is recovering good. It's one of those situations where no one can tell you uh, straight up how, how things are going to go going forward. She's being told that she has to do some radiation. And then she's being told she doesn't have to do chemotherapy. She does have to do chemotherapy, you know, back and forth. And uh, nobody knows it all going forward. They just want to make sure that they got it all and got it all out of the body. So remember my mom in prayer um, in this time. So let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Dear Father, we thank you. We thank you for your love to us. We thank you for listening to us this morning, and we thank you for this chance to lift our hearts to you in prayer. We're praying about those who are sick this morning and need a touch from you. We, we think of blame this morning, dear Lord, and this boy has been through so much, and uh, we, we're glad to hear good reports. We lift Jackson to you today. Dear Lord, uh, we lift all these little ones, Macy, um, Riley, dear Lord. It's been quite a year for these little ones. Dear Lord, we Think of those who are struggling and battling with cancer today. Be with my mom today, dear Lord. Dear Father, be, be with those in our midst today in our church family here who have fought with this ugly disease. And they 
They need a touch from you this morning. They need some help from you, dear Lord. Lord, we're praying about those who are dealing with COVID in this time. Uh, it's one that Loretta has mentioned this morning. Dear Lord, be with the Curran's family today. Be with the Annabelle. Help her to recover. Uh, be with Paul in this time. Dear Lord, be, um, be with Paul and his eyes. We uh, pray, dear Father, that you will bring healing to their household. Father, we uh, pray this morning that you'll move throughout this county and this area. Fortunate to still be in the orange here in Perry County. Praying for those counties around us, Muskingum, Licking, Fairfield. Throughout this state, your word was case numbers rise. People are worried. People are wondering what the future holds, dear Lord, when you're praying to remind everyone that you are here with us in this time. You go through things like this with us, not on our own. We thank you for your love to us. We thank you for your healing touch. We give you praise and glory for those moments when we we see healing happening in our families and in our lives. Dear Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your love to us. We pray you'll take these requests in your hands. It's in the wonderful name of Jesus that we pray. Said, 
Will you give me something as a pledge until you send it? She asked. He said, what pledge should I give you? Your seal and its cord and the staff in your hand, she answered. Then he, so he gave them to her and slept with her, and she became pregnant by him. After she left, she took off her veil and put on her widow's clothes again. Meanwhile, Judah sent the young goat by his friend, the Adulamite, in order to get his pledge back from the woman, but he did not find her. He asked the men who lived there, where is the shrine prostitute who was beside the road at Enam? There hasn't been any shrine prostitutes here, they said. So he went back to Judah and said, I didn't find her. Besides, the men who lived there said, there hasn't been any shrine prostitute here. Then Judah said, let her keep what she has, or we will become a laughing stock. After all, I did send her this young goat, but you didn't find her. <coughs> About three months later, Judah was told, your daughter-in-law Tamar is guilty of prostitution, and as a result, she is now pregnant. Judah said, bring her out and have her burned to death. As she was being brought out, she sent a message to her father-in-law. I am pregnant by the man who owns these, she said. And she added, see if you recognize whose seal and cord and staff these are. Judah recognized and said, she is more righteous than I, since I wouldn't give her my son Shelah. And he did not sleep with her again. When the time came for her to give birth, there were twin boys in her womb. As she was giving birth, one of them put out his hand. So the midwife took a scarlet thread and tied it around his wrist and said, This one came out first. But when he drew back his hand, his brother came out. And she said, So this is how you have broken out. And his name was Perez. Then his brother, who had the scarlet thread on his wrist, came out. And his name was Zerah. It's the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. Lord, we're continuing to pray this morning. As we head into uh, this time of prayer, we want to remember our nation in prayer. We want to lift up our country our state, our county. Now we want to uh, make mention of those in leadership. Uh, is there any other requests you'd like to make mention of this morning? Anything you'd like us to remember? Anybody hitting us with anything out on the wall out there? Yeah, Anybody? Bobby, Bobby just asked to remember his family in Ohio and him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Praying for you out there, Bobby. Thank you for watching this morning. Continue to lift up uh, our country in prayer as we deal with election results and things uh, being recounted and the legal process there and all. Uh, lift our country up uh, in this time. Let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time as we lift up our nation, our people. Let's bow our heads for a moment. Dear Lord, thank you. We thank you for this great nation that we have and the freedoms that we enjoy here. We thank you for this place that we can freely worship in a place like this. There are places in this world where those who lift up the name of Jesus cannot just walk around openly and freely and Thank you, dear Lord, for this time. We thank you for this place that we have to gather and worship and to lift the name of Jesus high, dear Lord. We pray you'll take this great nation into your hands. This nation needs healing, dear Lord. Emotionally, spiritually, yeah. and physically. Yeah. Lift our president to you in this hour. We pray that you'll speak to him. 
his heart that you would be receptive to your leading and guiding. We lift our senators, our representatives, our governors, right down to the local level, our, our mayors, our local officials. We lift this nation to you in the midst of this time this virus going on and we're so many months into it, dear Lord, and sometimes we wonder if anybody really understands what it is that we're dealing with and what it is that we need to do. There's still confusion and there's still people upset. We lift our nation to you and the midst of the rioting that has happened this year and the fighting and the quarreling. We lift this nation to you, dear Lord. We pray you can bring healing to your people. We think of this nation and remember times when people could work together and people could get along People could simply talk to one another. We've had moments, dear Lord, where one side has demanded that things be a certain way, and the other side says no, and fighting ensues. We've seen it happen. Pray you can reach into this country, dear Lord, and bring peace. Bring calm. We come to you, dear Lord, as our, as our God, our Father, our leader, our guide. We come to you in this time. We thank you, dear Lord, for your love to us. We pray you'll be merciful to us in this time. Bring healing to your country. Yes. Lord, we thank you for this hour to worship you and to praise you. Be with us as we continue to pray. It's in the wonderful name of Jesus that we pray. Well, we're going to move to the sermon at this time, and uh, pray you'll send in your offering, pray you'll uh, continue to send in your offering to the church, and just mail it into the P.O. box there, or if you choose to worship here on Sunday morning, we've got offering plates in the back. Uh, thank you for worshiping with us this morning, if you're watching at home. Thank you who have come out today uh, to worship in person. Going to move to the sermon here, and then we might spend a moment to pray after the sermon as well. We're in the midst of talking about uh, tithing, giving, finance, things like that. We opened the can on this last week, and uh, we might have muddied the waters quite a bit. Uh, sometimes that happens when you open the subject, so you keep going in it until the water gets a little bit clearer. And uh, maybe we'll clear the waters a little bit more today. Uh, we want to talk about the attitude of giving. And we want to focus on not so much the why we do it, but the how we do it. As we opened up into the subject last week, we learned that there is little said or referenced about the subject of tithing prior to the law of Moses. There are a few instances mentioned in Genesis, but nothing expository. Uh, why Abraham felt the need to give a tenth, the reason it was important. Uh, there are some practices that we see in Genesis, such as building an altar and worshiping God, uh, but there aren't much reason or meaning behind why people do it until we see 
Moses giving law to the Israelites in Exodus and beyond. Tithing and offerings are another one of those subjects. We see people doing it, but we don't have much to go on. And as we get started this week, uh, we're going to go to a not so familiar spot. We'll get into the law and what it has to say. Uh, and Jesus spoke about tithing and offerings also. But it was Paul speaking to Timothy near the end of the first letter that the apostle wrote to his student son in the faith that will set the tone for us this morning. Paul's letter to Timothy is also to us. And it is a refresher course in all that one should believe and practice. Uh, Paul spent much time training Timothy and then he sends him off into the ministry and he writes him a couple of letters while he is out doing his ministry. <clears throat> and so he reminds Timothy of many things in his first letter that he would have taught him. Uh, it was to Timothy as a preacher and to us as Christians following the Savior. And uh, let's see where it ties in with our giving from 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 17 to 19. Paul writing here says, Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share in this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. What we want to see this week is not the legal aspect of why we give, but the attitude behind what we give. Are we putting something in the offering plate because we think we are required to do so? Or are we doing it because we want to give back? Because we realize that God is what is most important. I think we should find where in the law our subject is first mentioned and then move forward from there. It is during the second year of the Exodus that we see Moses instituting the system of tithing. When the tabernacle was constructed, this mobile temple system that was put together while the Israelites were in the desert, it was here that Moses shows them the need to give a tenth of what they had. <clears throat> while they are worshiping in the desert, they have the tabernacle. Moses shows them the system of tithing giving a tenth of what they had. And what they had was not much. Uh, they're wandering through the desert at this point. So mostly what they had was some grain. Many of them had some animals and some livestock. Uh, money was scarce. An agricultural system was next to impossible in this environment. Uh, what did they have? Uh, Moses shows them the need to give out of what they did have. Uh, Leviticus 27, verses 30 to 33. A tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. Whoever would redeem any of their tithe must add a fifth of the value to it. Every tithe of the herd and flock, every tenth animal that passes under the shepherd's rod will be holy to the Lord. No one may pick out the good from the bad or make any substitution. If anyone does make a substitution, both the animal and its substitute become holy and cannot be redeemed. Some of you hit Carpenter's Market down in Somerset. Some of you hit TC Market down here uh, in Thornport and all, and, and you know what it's like to go up to the meat counter and to pick out your, your favorite piece of meat. Or if you're getting, getting some steaks 
sitting there, you, you have the freedom to walk up to the window and say, I'll take that one and that one and then that one in the back, you know, because that's my choice. I can pick that out. Uh, very few of us walk up to the window and just say, give me three steaks. I don't care what they are. No, no, you get to, or very often the whoever is working the counter will say, okay, which ones do you want? And all. You get to choose. You get to pick the best ones for yourself. In this way of tithing and giving to God, Moses is telling the people with words from God that just give and you don't worry about it. The shepherds would see their flocks pass under their rod, counting them as they go. And when the tenth one gets here, that one goes to God. You can imagine in their sights, in their eyes, when that one animal gets to the number ten, you might be going, Whoa, that one looks really good. Well, that one. That one looks better than all the other ones. I think I'd like to keep that one for myself. No, you can't do that. In fact, he says if you try to substitute, then the one who is the tenth and the substitute goes to God. Why, why, is, why is it that Moses seems to think they need to learn this idea of tithing. What is so important about this mode of worship that the Israelites need to grasp? Now the tabernacle is put together and they have this place to worship God. The people need to know how to worship God. The answer to our quandary today is not in the why, but in the how. Worship is something that is to be done. It's not something we just show up for. We're here to do something today. We're not here to just sit in the pew. We're here to do something. Something needs to be going on in our hearts, in our minds. So many just show up and sit in the pews and, well, I, I did it. I went. I went because I was supposed to. You know, I'm, I'm supposed to go to church. You know, you know there, there is there, there, there's nothing legal about today. There's no law in place saying you have to be here. Of course, your mom and your dad told you you had to be here. <laughs> mom and dad said, "Get up, get dressed, we're going to church today." going. There, there's, there's no legal mandate beating us over the head today saying you have to be here. You can go fishing if you want to today. We should, we should want to be here. We should want to worship. It should, it's a part of what we do. There's one line. There's one line in Hebrews and you probably know it. And do not forsake the assembling together of yourselves even more as we see the day approaching. Yeah. We should want to be around God's people. We should want to be in this place worshiping and praising. It's a part of our lives. Thank you if you came out to worship today or if you're watching at home can't really do any of this without some people gathered. Wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. It would look kind of funny to see some guy wandering around the room talking to no one. And yes, we kind of did that earlier this year. It's just two or three of us back in, uh, back in April and May. And, you know, finally we got back together for in-person worship. It's kind of strange. But, you know, we're getting through it. We want to put God first. We want to make God first in our lives. We're here to do something. We're here to sing. 
We're here to pray. We're here to commune with God in this time. And this subject comes right down into what we do. And our giving is part of what we do while we're here. We're giving to God out of what we have. So we come in here and we do things. We stand when we're supposed to stand. We sing when we're supposed to sing. We drop an offering in the or an envelope into the plate when it passes us. We repeat a prayer on the screen when we're told to. It's, it's, it is the how we are to worship that eludes many of us. Let's look back at the story of Cain and Abel for a moment. Like Many of the stories we see back here in early Genesis, there are details left out. Sometimes, sometimes I think I'm watching a 90s sitcom or dramedy back in there. So many of those shows back in the 90s, is they, they leave a tiny detail out, and that would create drama for the show, you know. And so many times I'm reading through Genesis here, and it feels exactly like that. There are some details left out. There are some things we don't know about the situation. Uh, it seems like there are some pieces intentionally left out of the conversation that if they would have just said this or that or communicated this or that, then they wouldn't have the problem that they have. And that's what it feels like with Cain and Abel. It is shared that both Cain and Abel are about to give offerings to God. But for some reason unknown to us, God doesn't smile down on Cain's offering. God seems to be happy with Abel's offering. What is it about Abel's offering that God seems to like? We're left out in the cold here. There's a bit of the dialogue that we would love to hear and it may take a little more digging to figure out what we want to know. 29 times the word tithe is mentioned in the Old Testament, in the NIV. Tithing and offering were an important part of the religious system for the Hebrews in the Old Testament. They were required to give of what they had in order to return a blessing to God. In many cases, they do not have money. So they gave their livestock. They gave of what grain they had. The point was to help Israel see that God comes first in all they do. Now we could get very legalistic here and state that because many of them did not give money, that we don't have to give money either. And that statement of context, context, context will come up. We need to understand the importance of tithing what we have. In our world today, we do have money. Money is a near essential part of living in today's world. We are rooted in the Old Testament world of thought and life. So in thinking about this tithing issue, what would Jesus have said to his listeners about the subject? Well, if we jump to Matthew chapter 23, verse 23, he says, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You give a tenth of your spices, mint, dill, and cumin, but you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. Luke 11, verse 42 says nearly the same thing. Woe to you, Pharisees, because you give God a tenth of your mint, rue, and all other kinds of garden herbs, but you neglect justice and the love of God. You should have practiced the latter without leaving the former undone. In the matter of tithing and offerings, the subject is often raised. Who are we giving this stuff to? Well, the matter is brought to a head here in the Gospels as Jesus confronts the religious leaders on the matter of giving. The Old Testament offers little in the way of law explaining the importance of giving connected with the outpouring of charity. 
However, there are verses like this from Deuteronomy chapters 14 and 15 that go into detail about tithes. Deuteronomy 14, 28 to 29. At the end of every three years, bring all the tithes of that year's produce and store it in your towns, so that the Levites, who have no allotment or inheritance of their own, and the foreigners and the fatherless and the widows who live in your towns may come and eat and be satisfied, and so that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hands. Sounds like a community dinner to me. We do it every month, and we're getting ready to do the yearly Thanksgiving dinner here, and it takes people giving and sacrificing much to pull off what we do at those dinners. I'm blessed to know the folks in this church and how they give and how much they give to make things work at these dinners. Listen to this further commandment from Deuteronomy 15, verses 7 and 8. If anyone is poor among your fellow Israelites in any of the towns of the land the Lord your God is giving you, do not be hard-hearted or tight-fisted toward them. Rather, be open-handed and freely lend them whatever they need. Now, they're out in the desert at that point. They're, they're heading to the promised land. And God is saying, when you get there and settle on the land, this is how you should live. If anybody is in need in any of the towns around you, be open-handed, be giving, be generous. There is a connection here between giving what we have in tithings and offerings and the directive to be charitable and help the poor. That is what God is all about, meeting people's needs. God comes first. Our notion, our desire is to give to God out of what he has given us. With that idea and commandment in mind, we use what we have given to God in turn to bless people around us. We make this clear sign that the things that we have are not our own. We didn't have possession of them in the first place. And someday we're going to leave this earth and they're not going to be ours anymore anyway. So while we are here, we give to God and give to others. Jesus was clear with the religious leaders he dealt with that they should, in fact, tithe. Yes, that was their spiritual responsibility. Also, they were not to neglect from the fact that they should take care of those in need around them. The two go hand in hand. We come to this passage of scripture in 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 to 15. Dan put it on the up there. Read this with me today. Remember this whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided to give in your sight in your heart to give. Not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor, their righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through us your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ. 
and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Now, some folks don't like putting this Corinthians passage into the subject of the tithing discussion. God loves a cheerful giver. And so for that reason, we think we can just give whatever we want to give and do whatever we want to do, and that's not what we're reading here. God loves a cheerful giver. Can you write out, can you write out 10% and cheerfully put that in the plate, joyfully? I'm happy to give this to you today, God. Here you go. Or is it there? Uh, Wrap this up. Ten percent. Ten percent. Do this. Well, that ten calf is really looking good today. I really like to keep that for myself. The issue of tithing is very legal-minded, with all the ramifications of punishment and consequences, and I cannot help but see all of this as a spiritual practice. That's what we're what we are here for, aren't we? The whole thing is spiritual and not legal. We have been set free from the law. Jesus came to free us from the burden of carrying the law everywhere we go. Instead, he has written the law on our hearts. We know what we are to do, and we can do it joyfully. My joy I give unto you. Giving and tithing are not substances that should cause us grief and harm. They are opportunities to worship God. And to put God first in all that we do. Can you give a tenth of what you have with a cheerful heart? I'll tell you what, it's a whole lot easier to do that in a setting where you know that ministry is being done and people's needs are being met. You know where your offering is going. We've been blessed over the years here at Thornbow to have a good financial team in our church that keeps people up to date on what's coming in and what's going out and where it's all going. Some treasurers and financial secretaries I've worked with in the past are so tight-lipped and keep checkbooks so close to home that nobody gets to see what's going on. And that's just the recipe for disaster there. We give to God freely. We give to bless God and to be a blessing to others. There's a little bit more to discuss next week. And there's also another chance to give freely what God has given to you. It's been a day to pray. We want to spend a moment praying about our church here. We've got repairs to make to our church building got a community to meet needs, We've got people around us who need to know God and to, to experience his salvation. There's a lot to pray about just right here in this village, right here in this building. Let's take a moment, let's pray for our church today. Dear Lord, we lift our church to you. Lord, we know that you see some of the walls in here in our sanctuary. Some of the repairs that need to be made. We're finding out here in these last few weeks that it may not be as serious as we thought some of the repairs would be. But they still need to be done. We lift our village to you in this time midst of this virus and there are people in need right now around us. And we're approaching this holiday season and that makes the meeting of needs even more difficult, even harder uh, 
to deal with. Fire department has called off the Santa visit this year. We're not doing our Santa breakfast downstairs this year. There are opportunities where we could meet people and talk to them, meet their needs, put some food in their bellies, put a smile on their face. This is all nothing we had signed up for and nothing we thought we would have to experience in our time. Pray that you'll lead us and guide us, dear Lord. Lead us and guide us to the people that we can help. Lead us and guide us to places where ministry can be done. We pray, dear Lord, that you'll help us to repair our building and our facility that we can continue to do ministry in this place. We thank you, dear Lord, for your love to us. In the wonderful name of Jesus, I would pray. Amen. Let's sing. Let's get to our feet as we sing one last verse. Sweet hour of prayer.
pray you can bring healing uh, to Mike at this time. You know, he's been uh, dealing with this for a while now, but I you know, pray you can touch him and make things right in his body today. Pray you'll bless Alpha today. Your Lord is, I know she uh, has uh, many physical things that she's dealing with. And, uh, she's been a dear part of our community for a long time, dear Lord, here. And we pray you'll be with Alpha today and uh, help her uh, in this hour as well, dear Lord. In the wonderful name of Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Alpha. Appreciate you. Anything else? God bless you. I'll let you go this morning. Thank you for coming out for worship.